Hey everyone, I think I am live now. How's everyone doing? Uh, welcome to yet another Wednesday. We made it, so that's always uh, an amazing thing. <laughs> so we have Roy here. Hey Roy, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. So glad you're here. Brad, how's it going? How you doing, sir? Kind of a slow day today in the beginning. Hey, Mr. Dickman, how's it going? Good to see you. So yeah, we're starting to uh, pile in, so that's good. So, uh, hey Colette, how you doing? Great to see you. So we have a good group already, great people. So that's always exciting. So welcome to part three of painting uh, Villanelle from Killing Eve, the show that is on Hulu. It's really exciting. Hey, Willie, how you doing, my friend? Mr. Rick, how's it going? So tell me, how is the sound thus far? So far, so good, my friends? I hope, I hope. I think I can turn off my volume. That will probably help matters. Okay, so I turned my volume off. Hey, what's up there, Air Todd? How's it going? Good to see everybody. Rick is in the house. So glad to see you, Rick. So... Good sound. Sound is perfect. I love hearing that. Um, funny thing is, earlier today, I had an issue with it freezing. So I had to reload and uh, reload the program. So thank God everything went smoothly. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Great to see you, Paul. So glad you're here. So uh, sound is good. So thank goodness. Um, it's always very important to me to have the best quality live stream out there. Let me see if I could make her just a little bit lighter. Just... Oh, okay. I'm making the wrong thing lighter. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, so I got to come here and then make this lighter. There we go. Maybe just a tad bit more. No, that's too much, right, guys? <laughs> Let's see. Maybe just a little bit. No, see, it goes too far. Let's see. Just like right there. Make sure I hit the plus key. And maybe lower. Okay, that looks a little bit better. A little bit more like what we what I'm seeing. Hey, Mr. John Payne, how's it going? Thank you so much. Good to see you. So here we are. We are in. Um, we are actually in part three, and so what we need to do is really come up with a game plan. And at this point, whenever you start fresh, from let's say you haven't painted. Uh, you know today and or maybe you haven't painted in a couple of days and you're coming in with airbrush you don't want to start out with guns blazing in the dark mixture even the medium mixture hey Raul good to see you my friend we want to start coming in with the detail mixture always always in a detail mixture and when I begin I always like to begin you know, with the eyes, just sort of uh, always give me an excuse to keep the eyes a couple of steps ahead, right? So that's what I'm going to do. However, before I ever touch my painting, I always make sure that I test it out on a scrap piece of paper. Always, always. Never go, never go fresh onto... Uh, onto your painting that could only it can only end badly uh you know you might get away with it but you don't get away with it forever okay so once again we're just going to come in with the detail mixture and we're gonna just have an excuse to paint paint her eyes we have a little cast shadow action happening here make sure we get that angle correct and then we'll come in with the pupil and then we'll bring down the iris and 
There we go. And you see, we're just going to be defining just a little bit more. Perfect. And now we'll just bring in this dark on the corner of her eye here. There we go. And now we can move on over to the other eye, which is cool. So we're just, this is warm ups, everybody. That's what we're doing. Just warming up with the detail mixture coming in and just getting going again. And again, I always like to start with the eye. What you do on one eye, you want to do on the other eye without exception. get this the shape correct right you always want to get the shapes correct it's always your opportunity to get those shapes shapes correct yes I love this temperature guys Tim's happy that's for sure and this this weather really makes me very happy finally can breathe and sleep Get this shadow coming down. <laughs> shadow coming down there. And here's an excuse for us to go ahead and work on that eyebrow. There we go. And then we could actually it comes out a little bit higher. The apex, the peak of the eye there, it comes out a little bit higher. And then it goes down. See that? You're always fixing your drawings, always checking your drawing out, you know, never trust, never trust what you did, always double check. You have to be your own teacher when you're working on your own. Okay, so you see, pretty good. I feel like I am getting uh, pretty acclimated. So remember, I did work on the other eye and so let me catch up by working a little bit on that eye as well oh Willie and I we like the cold weather right Colette says especially the pupil of the eye yes yeah, so true the pupil of the eye is so important Colette and see if I can zoom in just a tad bit more and so I'm just gonna catch up this eye with the other eye And see how this side of the white of the eye is much darker. Every painting is going to have its own little set of things, own little set of challenges. And your thing is to write down what your challenges are as you're painting. And make your next painting about circumventing those challenges. About conquering those challenges before they even begin. I think my focus is off. Let's see. That's a little better. Just going to check my ISO, everybody. Let's see. Uh, let's see. ISO 200. I should be okay. It's just a little grainy. I think it's because I'm zooming in. So let's see. Let's just continue. 
Okay, again, we want to catch this up. And so we're going to pull this down. Always with the one second rule, everybody. If you're going to paint for a second, you have to look for a second, okay? But never paint while you're looking. I know that sounds funny, but yes, if you paint while you're looking, then you're going to be inaccurate in your spraying. So, okay, so let's just pull this over here. So, she's looking a little more balanced, so let's zoom out. Okay, so look at her eyes, everybody. So her eyes are looking much more balanced, which is what we want. And so let's see. Okay, cool. So now let's let's always continue down the center of the face, right? Just like in karate, you're attacking only the center line of the face and the body. So let's go ahead and see if we can work on her nose area. See if there's any changes to be made. I think it's already as dark as I want to be at this stage. But maybe we could be a little more forceful or maybe change some angles that aren't 100%. So I'm notice I'm using a very delicate eraser. Please don't tear into the paper. Be very gentle. As if you were, you know, erasing on, on Jody's... Jody's face, that's how gentle you want to be when you erase. And you see I'm just going to narrow the nose by this angle here. See that? And that's more true to her anatomy. I'm going to increase my distance and I'm going to be very subtle as I do some of the half tones on either side of her nose. And remember, you want to set up for the highlight, right? So I'm going to do some very light uh, dusting. Just like so. And I'm feeling a little more confident now with this, but I want to bring a little bit lower this cast shadow. It's a little bit lower. Okay, so I'm okay with that. So there is a disparity right now in uh, both sides of her nose. Let's take a look at her image and let's see exactly what our lighting situation is. So if I'm looking at Villanelle right now, we can always tell what the lighting is uh, by the cast shadow. So if I'm looking at this image and you have all this image at home, you can see the cast shadow with the nose is coming from above. And also uh, it's coming down at an angle. So you can tell that the, the light source is above her and it's also in front of her. So pretty much on both sides are going to be even on this because the light is here and it's turning almost at the same angle and, and steepness uh, on both sides. So that's telling me that this side of the nose and this side of the nose are pretty much going to have the same, same value. And, but now that I look at it, for some reason this side is a little more in shadow. And I'm not sure why that's happening, mainly because we can't see her zygomatic arch here, but it's covered up. So that's probably why you have a little more shadow on this side. But yeah, it's pretty much a very even photo. And some people say, well, Tim, why do you go ahead? Hey, Mark, good to see you. Uh, why do you go ahead, Tim, and work so light? Why don't you just come in with, with the darks and really get in there. Well, when you are going ahead and you're painting and you're painting light, you are able to establish and to continue with with creating texture. And that's what we want to do. Oh my God, I had the chicken. So 
And I ate just before the live stream, so excuse me. So, so basically, as we're using this very light detail mixture, we're able to very lightly establish a lot of the texture. If you went too dark, you would not be able to because you already have that value. And going lighter with texture is not as effective as slowly building it up. And that's just the truth. You want to build up texture. It's going to work on some of these edges here. And you can see things are coming together, but in my time, right, I'm, I'm not in any hurry. So I'm going to make sure that I have this totally in my control. So we have the ear here as it kind of tucks under. There we go. And what we do on this side, let's go ahead and work on this side as well. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, so now you see we have this cast shadow from her finger. And let's establish that a little bit better. And we have this beautiful dark of her glove. Let's just establish that edge. This little triangle here, this negative space. And it looks dark, but I assure you it's super light, super, super light. And then it has a nice little half tone coming out over here. And what's going to follow this chin, right? You got some beautiful dark sort of hugging here. A lot of work on this one to do, so you never want to rush it. You have to, we have to make sure that her chin kind of sits on her hand there. Right? If we don't do that, it's not going to look believable. Our chin's not going to look heavy. And that's what we want. And then this beautiful dark coming down here. And you see, we're just developing, just developing, everybody. And then we have a nice dark coming over on here, but not as dark as by the glove, of course. So. Just taking our time. So on this side, I see we have... Oh, okay, so here we have this beautiful triangle right here. So let's make sure we, we put that in. Really start getting that hand looking good. And let's come over here. 
this is really kind of soft edge, so I'm kind of neglecting going in with a with a shield. Because any kind of overspray is going to work to our favor. And we're just going to make these shapes a little bit stronger. And let's bring in this dark below the ear. Perfect. So now we have something very beautiful going on. So again, we're moving down, right? We're moving down the center line. I just wanted to really take care of this area here. So let's go to her mouth, right? And see what we can do to bring that along. Okay. So I'm just gonna be very light and very deliberate. See how this comes down. Take your time. And we want to just slowly establish these lips of hers. very slowly go and we're just taking our time there's no rush I'm not on the clock so if you haven't purchased my inks before try doing this detail with Createx see how it flows without putting tons of 40 30 40 11 whatever this just if you want this kind of detail and you don't want to be playing around with dilutions and everything like that. You want it to be just ready to go out of the bottle. This is the way to go. Mr. Garcia, how are you, my friend? Very good to see you. So glad you're here. So now we're just really sketching in her mouth and her lips.
to get the angles correct. And then the bottom lip kind of takes a turn over here. You got to notice these little turns that the, you know, the features do. It's very important. Increase my distance. And you see that how I do that? Just increase the distance. Move her over here. So as you can see how I'm going, you know, it looks like nothing's happening, but we're really starting to get get her mouth going, right? And sort of making that all work. And let's see here. Mark, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, how would I build value with create text colors? I would dilute the heck out of them, you know. Uh, they're very thick out of the bottle. And, uh, you know, because the way I created the inks, everybody, I created the ink so it would flow perfectly out of the airbrush. So the inks are really a great way to find out exactly what kind of viscosity is perfect for the airbrush. So, yeah, I would do it the same way, but I would really, and everything, every color, I would really thin it out, like, a lot, because it's way too thick out of the bottle. And build up very slowly from light to dark. So I'm pumping that trigger, everybody, and so when you pump the trigger, you are... Uh, in essence, you're kind of creating texture. You're not doing a, you know, just one strong uh, value. You're pumping that trigger, so you're getting that kind of smokiness. And uh, there's a bigger space between the droplets of ink. So that's that's the thinking of why, you know, I would want you to pump that trigger. Plus, you have more control, which is really fantastic. There we go. So let's work on her bottom lip just a little bit more. And we're going to define a little bit better as we, uh, you know, work different areas. Let's just bring this over. Don't worry about it looking like it or looking like her right now. That's not your concern. Right now is just sticking with the program, building up value, and along the way, building up texture. Whether it looks like her or any part doesn't look right at this point, that's not that's inconsequential. Okay, so let's move on over here. So right here, I can see it's a little harsh, so we're just going to bring this dark up, like so, and kind of unify this shape here. See that? That kind of softened things. Same thing on this side. We want to soften things up, so we're just going to, you know, spray in some of those darker values on the inside of her face here. Same thing. Just bring in some of those darker values, soften up her her features a little bit, which is so important. Hey, Mr. Steve, Dr. Steve, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Wow, so great you're here. So that's fantastic. How's work, sir? So it's always fantastic. Dr. Steve is a great friend of the channel. And uh, I always want to thank him for his support. And it's just amazing. So without Dr. Steve, you know, I don't know where I'd be. You know, he's just amazing. And we're just continuing moving on and everything like that, you know. And now Mark says, will these darks lighten up along the way? Definitely. Uh, as we come in with the darks of her hair, because her hair is very dark, right? So that's very, very important. 
uh, to realize that even though this face might look dark, it isn't once we come in with the dark. So that's really cool. And oh, wow, you're on a staycation. Oh, fantastic. Are you seeing some of the sites in the, in the, Pencil, in the northern Pennsylvania, northwestern Pennsylvania uh, section doing any of that, uh, Steve? Let's see. And let's, now on this side here, we have a dark, so especially over here. So in this corner, we have the dark of the glove. So let's make sure we put that in. And then we have a little bit of a cast shadow, which is hard to decipher between the two right now. Now you always got to be careful because, you know, we always have, you know, sometimes you'll have inconsistencies of the paper, just like any, any surface that you use. You're going to have some of that happening. So what I'm trying to do is really hit some of these like dark pockets. So this way we can gain more structure, you know. Oh, that's nice. Just taking it easy. That's the best thing. Just, you know, wake up at noon o'clock, right? <laughs> you know, not having anywhere to go is probably the best feeling. And so pretty soon I'm going to come in with uh, much darker, but I just want to play around with these edges. So I have my uh, Extreme Patriot 105. I know Willie purchased one of these, the customized version. Really fantastic for, uh, you know, larger areas of paint. Uh, so that's really good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be brave enough to put in the medium mixture as soon as I locate it. Let's see. It was here a minute ago. My kitty likes to knock it down uh, when I'm in bed. So she'll just knock it down and that takes care of that. So what? whenever I'm not, I can't find anything, it's usually behind something and that's exactly what happened. Or under something. Like I lose my wallet because it's underneath like a piece of paper or something. It's the worst, you know? And so I'm putting in the uh, medium mixture because I definitely got to work on her, her hair there. That's definitely up here has to be worked on. So remember, I'm always testing my airbrush before I ever put it on my painting. So now I have her here. And uh, so I'm going to keep it small and you'll see that I have a lot of adjustment here with the hair. And you can see now I'm not gonna go crazy with the dark or I'm gonna get it I'm just establishing the shape of the hair and I'm gonna come back to it of course so don't try and uh, build Rome in a day right you just you're just going to establish the shape you know right here uh, maybe put in this dark this beautiful dark she has in the shadow of her hair. Just establish that. And you see more of her personality is coming, you know? And that's what's so important is to establish more of her personality. And and that happens just by following the following the program, right? So right here, you see there's a beautiful dark um, on her forehead. You know, it's a cast shadow or maybe a dark. Yeah, I think it's more of a cast shadow of the hair. So let's establish this dark. And when you establish darks, you're kind of keying the light and you're establishing how light other areas will be. Now this will probably be the dark mixture when we kind of Finish it up. There we go. And so as you can see, we brought that down. And anything that's kind of 
not exactly the way you wanted to paint is easily erased. Easily erased. There we go. And now let's see if we could assimilate the dark into into the hair so it doesn't look like she's cut out right she's part of this atmosphere we're just gonna much darker right and then we're gonna soften up these edges here but much darker we can pull out the light with the eraser and then with the funds and porter so definitely We're not going to go crazy with the hair, but we do need to establish it. It's very important. And also we need to establish as we move down some of the values as it assimilates into her figure. See how we just sort of calm that down. And then on this side, of course, we see that it's actually dark in here, so let's establish that. And this way, you know, we have to make sure that she's part of the atmosphere, that, that she's in this place, and we have to make her come out of the darkness. It's one thing to do a likeness, but it's another thing to make it look like she's in this environment. Thank you, Colette. I appreciate that so much. So now we have to look at her glove on the right side, right? So this is all very dark. So we're just going to establish this dark here as it comes here. There's a light that comes out here and then comes down here. You don't want to oversaturate, right? So you're going to make sure that we don't get carried away. And this dark comes down right along here. And it's going to work out. We just have to stick with the program, right? We have to be tenacious. We have no choice but to be tenacious. Because painting is not easy. Recreating a three-dimensional form on a two-dimensional space is not easy. So that's why we have to be tenacious. And so your tenacity will pay off. Trust me, trust me. It will. Again, we're just going to continue moving on. Just establishing these darks. And then you can see here how these darks really kind of meander back and forth. And that's what we want to do. We want to meander that back and forth just like so. And and then we have a lighter value coming down here and then this dark value really starts to assimilate into this darkness but we're not trying to get it right away we're just going to begin it right because if we try to get it right away we're going to we're going to get too wet and we're going to oversaturate and it's going to look ugly and we're going to damage the paper and all that fun stuff so we want to make sure that we don't do that. So I'm just gonna focus the camera. Okay, so that that helps me to focus. I just do autofocus for a second and then it focuses rather nicely. So, so far so good. We're taking our time, no rush. What I'm doing is just, 
assimilating the glove into the dark, right? And it kind of comes up here and comes over and down. Just like so. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to go back to our detail mixture. And let's just see how much more control one has with the detail mixture. It's unbelievable how much control you have with it. So over the last couple of days, I've been working on revamping my website and it's going to be very exciting it's going to have a full a new blog it's going to have videos that aren't available anywhere else it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be a great resource for airbrush artists and pastel painters and for students and those who are looking into what the inks can do what the airbrush can do so I'm really giving it the really, really working on it full force. It's not easy. It's one of the hardest things I really have been undertaking lately since going into digital art has been really pushing this. And hey, Nameless, how you doing? Mike Deloach, how's it going? Yeah, still following one second rule, even for saturation. Yes, definitely. Uh, the one second rule is so crucial. And, you know, without it, you know, we're, we're going to do paintings that just aren't quite as good as they could be. Right? So that's very important. Okay, and then... Right here, we're going to do the dark on this side. And we have a lot of work to do, but I'm just establishing it. And I'm going to come back into the media mixture. And I'm just going to see if I can really soften this up quite a lot. But we'll build up that soft edge, right? And we have a lot of detail to do, so I'm not going to go too crazy. But down here, I can see these values are super... It's super dark, so let's go ahead and make this happen. Perfect. So now, let's see what kind of assimilation we have to do down here. And I think we're pretty good. But what I can do is maybe start coming in here with this edge here. Very soft edge here. Very, very soft edge. And what I'm doing is really just establishing that soft edge. I'm not going crazy just yet. I'll go crazy later, you know? <laughs> Sorry about that, Chris. Uh, I'm I'm trying. I try to uh, I'm trying to uh, not be uh, as universal as possible, my friend. I'll try. But I really appreciate everybody being here. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate you coming, Chris. Thank you. There we go. All right, so we have this dark here. It's like one big dark area with just a little bit of reflected light. So let's come in here and really start establishing this dark, this dark area right in here. There's going to be many layers to do this. So this is just the very first layer to start out, you know, definitely. So 
So, Dr. Steve, I'm always looking forward to painting with you, my friend. You let me know. And just right here, and then we have this. We're just going to put in the dark first. But you see a lot of these, these darks sort of like bleed right into the background. I have to be careful making sure that I'm really, really, you know, looking at the larger shapes, but also not losing my drawing, okay? You don't want to lose your drawing. That would be bad. Again, we're just going to continue. As long as you have the attitude, you know, I don't care how long it's going to take, then you're okay. Then you take your time. You're not going darker than you need to at any stage. And that's really important. I really can't stress how much that is important. To really not go too dark too soon, okay? So try not to let that happen. Try not to let our impatience get in the way of, of a beautiful painting. So interesting thing, one of the reasons why I didn't go ahead and go in with white with the, as I did with the face on the arm is the fact that this arm is going to look much whiter with just the tone of the paper because everything around is going to be so dark. So I don't even have to go ahead and do that. The eye is going to make it much lighter. So, so yeah, and then I could have decided to go ahead and do it but you know it was in my best interest to wait and I'm glad I did because if I came in with white it would have been a little little too much you know and Dr. Steve says he's uh, waiting remodeling to get finished oh how cool so so are you are you remodeling your whole house and also are you gonna have a little studio area that would be great and Chris says uh, Puerto Rican kid from the Bronx you need to use Spanglish yes uh, uh, el truque, right? <laughs> My Spanish friends, they say el truque. That's so funny. That makes me crack up. I love Spanish. Uh, Spanglish. Spanglish is a real thing, guys. And uh, Brad says, I need to color code his airbrushes. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yes, uh, Brad has different airbrush for different mixtures as he paints, which is really great. Really smart way of doing it. Okay, so I do have uh, something right here, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and establish the edge here. Kind of blend that in so I can get this beautiful edge. Keep that one second rule going, everybody. Let the painting happen. Let the painting come to you sometimes. Okay, Gatorade break. Gatorade. So, let's take... I know sugar and everything, but, you know, lately I've been just dying of thirst. Oh, that's good. That's so good. Ugh. Okay, I guess it's the electrolytes, right? That's probably what it is. So, all right. So, I think I do want to cover this area up because I am going to come in with some darks of the glove. So, let's see. 
let's see what we have as far as our mylar, right? So I'm just going to move over here and check my little area. So what I need is uh, gloves. So I'm going to work in the gloves and I just don't want to screw everything else up. So this is going to be great. Put this over here like so. This keeps everything from getting messy. Okay, so I'm going to work on this side. Make sure this is correct on this side. Okay, and then on this side, make sure this side is correct. Sure this is good. Gonna worry about one side at a time. Probably the best way to do it. One side at a time. I don't have to worry about protecting over here right now. Actually, I don't have to protect about anything over there. So really just this side's really important. And I'm gonna continue with that detail mixture because I love it so much. Okay, let's see. And we're going to zoom out. And let's put the uh, magnet close to the edge. Very important. Get one of these little guys. Maintain this beautiful edge without getting her her arm all oversprayed. But notice how I'm moving around, everybody. Not staying in one spot. this side we have this beautiful contour here so let's make sure we keep that going because it's much lighter uh, you'll see you know on the other side of that glove so what we want to do is establish this dark that pretty much begins right here If you do follow along with me in this painting, you'll know that this is a very complex portrait. And that's a lot of fun. So it, you did pick a good one to, to work on with me. So really make sure that you get those magnets close to the edge. Because that's going to keep it from billowing under... And this dark of the glove comes all the way down her forearm. There we go. Just like so. Now we have this beautiful dark coming out on this side. Now don't worry about this crease. We can always paint that crease in. So it's such a minor thing. It's nothing to really lose any sleep over. really beautiful okay so we we want to make sure that we kind of get this little pincer movement here so we want to come this way and then we want to come this way so we have this nice little pincer movement and then it's a little bit darker here and you have that little mid-tone because remember there's a lot of twisting and turning happening here And then you have this turn coming down here like so. And coming out here. 
and then we have we'll work on you know the creases at the corner here no worries we can really simplify this so it's not as difficult or intimidating as it looks and you see now that we have these edges here we can really start making it look like her gloves and you see we have this dark here we can really accent this the texture and the edges and so really nice the way it's gonna come it's gonna come together trust me guys and girls it's gonna come together she's gonna come together Jody's gonna come together uh, when she comes together <laughs> when she comes together is not important and uh, Mark says uh, exactly nameless says uh, looks interesting Bradley says complex is a little bit of an understatement when trying to keep up with you uh, I'm sorry so I'll try and not go too fast but you guys can always watch this in recording so that's good um, let's see uh, okay cool so everyone's keeping up so uh, what are some of the projects our projects that people are working on uh, you know it is November is there any kind of uh, decorative things that anyone's doing right now you know decorating for Thanksgiving is that a thing I just want to go into too much detail that I kind of paint myself in the corner so I'm just going to slow it down and make sure that I'm doing the one second rule. I'm not painting anywhere. So let's just peel this up and just see how it's looking, right? So I'm just going to move these magnets off to the side. I'm just going to peel up and see what it looks like and if I'm happy with the results thus far. I'm just going to peel. Excuse me, Jody. Let's see. Okay, actually we'll pull the whole thing up and we'll see uh, Okay, so look at that. So actually that really worked that really gave us a nice edge which we're looking for so and then We can probably come back in here in a moment, but let's work on Pulling this down here these dark edges Go. And then right here, of course, we want to get rid of anything that really hard edges that don't belong, right? I'm going to come back with the medium mixture and get rid of some of these crazy hard edges that just don't belong. Remember, be tenacious. Tenacious is the most important thing. Oh, yeah, I did see those posts. Those are amazing. So Brad is uh, a school bus driver part-time and uh, for kids in Manitoba. And uh, he has a contest, which he sponsors. And I believe the kids get like $100, don't they, for first prize? And uh, so... I think they were like 18 entries and they're on his Facebook channel. Check it out. Really very cool. Hey, Mr. Steve Leahy, how you doing? Always, always better late than never, my friend. How you doing? Good to see you, sir. So are you back in Ohio? I know Steve went home. Uh, he went to uh, Massachusetts. And so that must have been cool and uh really very uh beautiful time of year autumn in boston is really the best i really love that oh for the moment oh yes so um i hope things calm down for you sir so you don't have to do so much traveling right 
and traveling is fun, but it does get it get you weary. It gets me weary when I do a lot of traveling. I'm gonna bring this dark up. So the word of the day, everyone, is tenacity, right? You're just going to be so tenacious when you're painting these gloves, when you're painting the dark in here. All of that is going to really spell what you need to do. Really be tough, really be determined. And just look for these darks here. See, we have this dark coming over here. We have this dark coming over here. And just building up very slowly, like we have all the time in the world. And we're just going to continue doing that. As I go little by little, I'm just going to be assimilating those edges into the atmosphere. The atmosphere of where Jody is, right? She's, she's not a cutout. So she is just, we have to make her feel like she's part of the atmosphere. Yes, I did cut her out and put her there and sprayed around her, but we are going to just assimilate her into this background, feel like she's in a space, her space, and that's what we want to do. Yeah, the school bus art was really amazing, just so fantastic. So great job those kids did. And let's bring back, we're going to do the inside of this. So we're going to bring back that glove shield rather quickly, momentarily. Let's see. Do I have the right size? I think I do. So we're just going to really concentrate on this one side, right? We're not going to worry about the other side. Oh, see, I love when it falls into place. I love when a plan comes together or something like that. Okay, so we're just going to bring that in here. And come over here like this. And we're really going to concentrate on this inner edge. Really make it look like, you know... Ooh, see, we have to watch the edge. We don't want billowing. No billowing here. I'm just going to bring this over. There we go. Nice on the edges there, you know. And again, so I'm getting my Pure Ref. If you haven't downloaded Pure Ref, please do so. It's the best thing since sliced bread. Pure Ref is not giving me anything. I just love those guys, you know. Pure Ref makes me happy because, you know, it's so fantastic. You you get to keep the, um, which is really cool, no matter what program you hit, it'll stay on top and you can have several photos. Uh, you can uh, have a quick drop down where you can actually uh, open up Pure Ref, but you can open up the actual image. So if you're someone like me who's working on maybe seven paintings at a time <laughs> you know it's good to pull up the right reference rather quickly and just get to working real fast i don't know if you ever tried working just working from you know the microsoft image viewer or something like that you'll know the disdain i feel for for working with that program and then we're just going to pull this up here. When I want to really establish the edge of, of these gloves. So I'm just going to really establish this here. So cool.
painting is simple, but not easy. So remember, it's always it's always simple, but it's not easy. So once you know you know what to do, actually doing it becomes the difficult part. So I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's true. Um, okay, so I have this nice dark edge here. Let's make this happen. Let's just really hit this edge here on this side. I really want that to pop. Ooh, see that? That's scary. So sometimes when you get a little overzealous like I just did, you want to take this and you just want to tap it on the mylar. You want to really make sure you don't get it on the surface. And uh, so let's go ahead and lift this up and see what we have. And so again, all I'm doing is really getting my edges established. I hope that overzealousness did not cause me problems, but no, okay, so not bad. So you see, we're doing really good. Now we can really start getting in there with some of the, uh, the detail. So looking at this, uh, there are some lighter areas in her mouth. And I want to do that, just establish. Notice I'm not coming in with white in her, in her teeth yet because it would be obliterated with overspray and it's just gonna look terrible. So I'm just gonna build everything around that first and then go from there. But as you can see, we are building up value in everything, so. Hey Blue, how's it going? Good to see you. So glad you're here and Exposing children at an early age is probably the best gift you can give them. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll learn to love art their whole life. They may not become artists, but they will love art and feel like it's something that's part of them. And I think that's a great gift, you know. So that's really wonderful. And let's see here. Wow, we're past 1030 already. I've been painting a lot, so <laughs> which is good. Let's go ahead and put the uh, face shield on. We're going to do a little more work here, and I just don't want to dirty things up. So, you know, there are times when you want to be bold, and there are times you just want to uh, make sure you protect all the areas, uh, especially something like the face which is going to be your front and center main main focus so let's see here which is great and i'll get my glasses on for this yes very true um i have a student right now she's amazing she's six she just turned six and I just look forward to our lessons together, you know, just, you know, the energy that they have, the really great energy, oh, I really look forward to my classes with her. She's an amazing kid. Okay, so let's see if this is it. I'm going to turn on the fan and you guys let me know if it causes anything weird, okay? Because I'm getting a little sweaty. Let's see. Do you hear any kind of weird uh, interference? How's the sound? Is the sound okay? Because I went ahead and I have a fan going on me right now. And it feels really good, by the way. But let me know if it's causing any kind of sound uh, interference. Okay, so we have our face covered. And what we can do is we can start 
Thank you. Ah, uh, Steve, have a great night. Always a pleasure. And uh, thank you so much, Steve, for everything. And I will be sending you an email within the next few days. I have some great news for you. And so that's going to be very exciting. So, Dr. Steve, enjoy your stay vacation. Sleep till at least 12 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> enjoy enjoy the, the cool weather. Okay, so... So right now I have this and let's go ahead and work on that really cool. Just have to make sure that it is, this is the thing. I have to make sure, let me pull this in here. I'm going to be working on this, this sort of hat pin here and we'll just pull that out just a little bit and then I'm going to work in here because I did lose the drawing so I want to gain that back. Maybe I can do that now with the pencil. What do you, what do you all think here? Let's see. Looking for my 0 0.5 mechanical pencil. Let's see. Where is it? Okay, here we are and okay so drawing is always going to be your best friend no matter when or how far you've been painting it's it's always that one thing that's going to give you you know in cases like this and i agree with with uh with mr mr Leahy, and he says and i agree that you know don't let drawing stop you from doing airbrush art, right? And I think that's very, uh, very true with uh, what Mr. Leahy says there. But it does help. And to practice drawing is always going to be something that is going to be in your best interest. Little times like this, you know, where I have to draw in this is going to be really important. So I can see now that I'm doing the one second rule where I went wrong. So the one second rule is, you know, with drawing and everything is so important. So again, let's pull this out here. So we look at the landmarks where the ear is, right? And then it comes out straight after it comes out of the ear. And then right here where you have this break of the hair where it comes out right here and kind of uh, kisses her glove just like there that's where you have the beginning of this ornate shape here and then on this side it's interesting because this side is much more straight as it comes out from this the straightness of the hair, hairpin and then it sort of cuts in just like that very important to get that you know uh, thanks so much, Blue. Good to see you. I hope you have a, a great night. And then we're just going to pull this up. And right here, where this darkness goes, it comes up here, and then it comes down just like that. And then we have this dark. And then as this comes down, it continues right here so you're gonna have this kind of dark shape right there and if I can zoom in maybe I could really show you exactly what I'm doing here so you know drawing is sometimes the thing that's gonna save you and I need some saving here because I did lose the drawing and it happens to the best of us right we lose our original drawing that's why I don't get rid of pencil lines until until you don't need them anymore. In this case, I think I lost the pencil lines uh, when I was doing the hair or something like that. Let's bring this out just a little bit more and then work that up here. There we go. And 
And then this shape looks like a snake or something. And then right here it looks like some hair that's coming over here. So now I can come in and really, really understand what I'm painting because now I drew it and I can go right in there. Okay. See now I can paint that in. So that that drawing is really going to be what's going to get you through when stuff like this happens. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, uh-oh. Oh, that fan feels really good. Do you guys hear any kind of uh, feedback noise or anything? Because I have that fan going, let me know. Let's see. Let me move this one up one. Whoop, put that back. Nope. There we go. Okay. So, very nice that we were able to actually save that. And now let's go ahead and start working in this dark edge here. Let's move this away and see how good or bad it looks. Okay, not bad. So it is establishing that, which is good, right? Uh, oh, so which compressor I have? I have the uh, Silent Air Super Silent 50. It's really great. Uh, it's not as quiet as I thought it would be, but it's quiet enough not to disturb my neighbors. So it's cool, you know? I, I'm not a big fan of California Air Tools as my fourth one uh, just stopped working. I'm in the middle of talking with uh, Silent Air to fix it. I just purchased it uh, as soon as April and it already died on me so hopefully they're going to fix it. So they wanted me to do some troubleshooting and I'm like sorry I'm like really busy. Can't troubleshoot today so I'll call them back uh, tomorrow sometime to troubleshoot. So now we can zoom out and at least we established uh, that particular uh, item and there's this beautiful little dark that comes down right here. There. So I'm starting to really feel very encouraged with this piece but we don't want to count our, we don't want to uh, look at our home runs, right? We just want to stick with this, uh, be tenacious, and work slowly. Just like so. And again, I'm in my detail mixture right now, and I'm just slowly building up. Now, those who are following along might say, Tim, you're going too fast. But those who are watching and aren't following along are, are uh, <laughs> you know, going, I'm going too slow. Because when you're painting this, you know, it really is a lot to look at at one time. And the fact that I move around a lot is uh, can be very daunting 
you know so yeah it looks like I'm going slow but I'm really just building a whole painting together and that's what's really exciting uh, about the technique is that I'm very slow and deliberate in because I'm painting everything but I'm very quickly because everything is actually starting to uh, develop together and that's when the painting sort of just sort of sort of evolves right and that's what we do want we want the painting to evolve again we have this really hard edge here so I'm going to come back in with my medium mixture in my extreme paint treat 105 be on the lookout for my new website coming up it's very exciting oh I hope it comes through I'm going to be tenacious so I'm going to do it until it until it's good and it's been very hard I have very uh you know it's not complete it's do all the links aren't there and everything like that but it will be just a wonder it'll have information on the live streams it'll have some videos that aren't available anywhere else it's very exciting great resource for airbrush artists and my students and prospective students all that good stuff which is really fantastic so you see this really super hard edge. We're just going to, like I said, I'm not trying to obliterate that. That's going to take many layers to actually get rid of those edges because it was a type of frisket. And so we're just going to continue working until, until we get this. But we're not going to try and obliterate those edges right away. It's just going to take time. Patience is really important in every aspect. I'm going to use the uh, laboratory and I'll be right back. Talks amongst yourselves, everybody. I am back. Let's see if uh, anyone's still here. <laughs> and let's see. So, 
I am uh, going to continue uh, this. So, so like I said, when we work on the whole area, we're nearly not staying in one area too long. We just continue moving around. And that's going to be the main theme, basically, is just continue moving around, not staying too long. And yes, it doesn't get a finished look right away, but it's going to happen in time, right? So that's something that we want to make sure that um, we have patience with that, you know? We have to have patience with this technique of kind of moving around and painting the whole area, you know? And let's see. International oh, intermission music. <laughs> yeah, with the, you know, with the candies and the popcorn walking across the screen. Like I used to do in the drive-in movies. I don't know if you remember that, Steve. It was like a parade of uh, concession, con concession stand products. Let's see here. Again, just moving around. Okay, so you see that little slit there? I have to keep that clean. So let's see. See that little slit of skin there? Just want to keep that clean. See that? So that little thing and then let's keep it clean as well and let's work on this dark that comes out. Right here, don't oversaturate, let it dry. Sort of bring that over. Uh, so SEMA had a low uh, turnout, wow. Yeah, well, things are not getting better with COVID, that's for sure. You know, I don't care what the news says. Uh, news it used to be reliable, at least I thought it was when I was a kid. Now it's like, you hear the news, don't believe them. You know, it's not getting better. Uh, things are really rough. And uh, it's really sad, you know. And so please be careful out there, everybody. You know. Yes, exactly, Steve, those subliminal messages. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, Naval Subscriber says, with all the artists here, anyone here experience with tattooing? No, not me, my friend. Uh, I'm, I'm too much of a nerd, unfortunately. Uh, but that's cool. Many a times, tattoo parlors try to recruit me. Funny story, I was in San Francisco down in Columbus. And it was a tattoo shop and I had my sketchbook with me. I was dating a girl in San Francisco at the time. Beautiful girl, Maria. And um, I had my sketchbook and I don't know what possessed it. I think she wanted to get a tattoo or something. And so we went in there and I had my, t t uh, my sketchbook and the gentleman wanted to see it. He's like, hey, you know, if you want a job, you know, you can start as an apprentice, and, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. But I lived in New Jersey, and she lived in San Francisco, so that never really happened as far as the job, though. I almost moved to San Francisco. I mean, I really wanted to. I had all the money saved and everything. Back in the day, they actually had something called traveler's checks. I don't know if you know, but I had like 5000 in traveler's checks ready to move. And then something happened, and uh, it never it never panned out. But I love San Francisco. What a beautiful, beautiful place, and just you know, really exciting place to live. You know. And Stephen says, "Not, not, not me. Nameless canvas can't punch me if I screw up." That's true. <laughs> and canvas can't sue us. Very true, Steve. This part with the finger and everything, I'm going to work on slowly. Don't rush it. I have to make sure I don't rush it. 
So I'm just going to build that up slowly, make sure I have the really nice uh, stencil there. But right here, we it's much darker, so I'm just going to sort of paint some of the variations of value here. And then we'll get more details with the hair as we go. But just these variations of value. Little by little, we'll get this beautiful woman uh, looking like who she is. Oh, look down here. So you can see, like down here, we have some, some things to assimilate here. Also over here, it's much darker. So let's go ahead. Let's look for the big shapes first, and then we'll worry about individual hairs. Am I right? So big shapes first, individual hairs later. Just like that. Just get that established. Same thing with the darks of the hair coming down from here. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Leahy. I really appreciate that. Mr. Leahy just gave a, uh, a donation of $10. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You know, things like that really helped me to continue this. And I just want to say that, you know, everyone who supports the channel, you know, who are taking the classes, or buy the inks and everything like that. You really helped me to continue this and not have to get a job answering phones or something like that. That I can continue innovating and put money towards the website and create products and classes that are geared for, for you all. So thank you, Steve. I really appreciate that, my friend. Let's see. Uh, that's true, Nameless. You can easily uh, uh, cover up on a canvas. And Mark, so I heard things about San Francisco lately. That's so sad because, you know, yeah, I was dating someone in San Francisco, so it made it more exciting But at the time. But uh, it was just wonderful. And... Uh, you know, it's just so fantastic to um, just see that city and experience it. It was just so fantastic. Boy, this Julie Comer, she's really a femme fatale. And she has a lot of different looks. And I think that's what I really love about her as a model. You know, to, to paint. Really fantastic. Okay, in the spirit of moving around, let's work on her forehead. Remember, the forehead is not a, a metal plate. So we're just going to increase my distance because it's very light. So I'm going to be about three and a half to four inches away. And I'm just going to start, start now making her forehead a three-dimensional form that has hills and valleys and not so many value, valleys, but hills. And a little texture. Oh, Mark, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Mark with the uh, super sticker. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your your support there, Mark. And I, it is a party going on. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. I really, really thank you. From the bottom of my heart makes me feel good. I'm doing something right. And, uh, and this website, although it's, it's the bane of my existence right now, I'm working really hard on it, you know, because I want it to be a place of resource for airbrush artists, airbrush students. Uh, so I'm excited that is, that is coming down the pike, you know. So, but I have to get it done. So the website's gonna be inkflingers.com, which is very exciting. So I was able to get that domain name. And so it'll be easy to find. Just go on inkflingers.com. There'll be links to my website, Instagram, all that fun stuff. And uh, information on the live streams and 
on classes and new products and, you know, information on students and what you all are doing and everything. Oh, no, thank you so much, Mark. That is so fantastic. I appreciate that a lot more than you know. So thank you so much. So here we are, 11.06 already, but we're doing good. We're going to stick with it. Remember, tenacity is the word of the day, right? Being steadfast in continuing. Don't worry whether it's looking perfect. Just as long as you're sticking with the program, you're going to be okay. And you see here, you know, it's kind of uh, it looks very light and there's hard edges that really don't belong. Don't worry about that. We're going to get to that. But we have to move around. We have to bring this painting together as a whole. It's not a bunch of small pieces, but it's a, it's a whole. And, uh, and we want to bring it up as an ensemble. That's what I'm going to say. Paint the ensemble. Uh, make sure that when it's done, it looks as though it was painted all at once. And you know what? Angra can't be wrong, that's for sure. Because he was, he was amazing upon amazing. So, so there's these little, she has little cute little cheeks here, right? So, am I going to go ahead and just paint them in with the airbrush hoping that I get it right? No, I'm not going to do that. So, what I want to do is I'm not trusting myself. No, no, no. So I'm going to draw in where the cheek comes in and then it comes out, comes in this angle and then it kind of shoots down just like that. And then let's look at Jody's other side here. Hey, Brad, thank you so much, Brad, with, uh, this is uh, turning out to be quite a night. Thank you so much, Brad, I appreciate that. And uh, so, uh, thank you, Brad, for the uh, $10 donation. It's so welcome and so appreciated. And uh, I just want to say, uh, I really appreciate the support from everyone tonight. And Steve says he finds it so hard to paint when tired. Sometimes it just needs to be done. I know what you mean. When I'm tired, that is, I have to be so diligent not to paint. And I know that's, uh, but I know if you have de uh, detail, uh, deadlines, then I can understand. But like last night I wanted to paint, but I was just so tired. I was like, no, I'm not going to do anything of consequence, so I stopped, but I didn't have a deadline, so that was the one thing that I had, uh, you know, going for me, so, yeah, I can understand when you have deadlines, sir. That's a rough place to be when you're tired, and you just kind of want to conk out, right? I'm going to be really far away here, really far away, so, and about four inches, and I'm just going to seriously, first I got to find the right edge, about four inches, and I'm just going to dust, give it a shot, just like that. See that little shot there? And then I'm going to give it another shot as it comes down here, and I'm going to be tenacious until I find... that edge as it comes down. I'm going to give it another shot. See that? So now I have that edge there. And it's just a little tiny bit darker right there. So I drew it out. I'm going to come back later and I'm going to erase that, but not until it dries. So not falling into that trap. Same thing here. I'm going to put this here. And I don't want it to cross with the nostril, so I'm going to go this way. It's going to be about four inches away. Give it a quick shot. Look at that. And just give it another shot. See that? And now I'm kind of establishing that real 
subtleness in that cheek. And that subtlety is very difficult to get, you know? So let's go ahead. This side is actually dry. So I'm gonna take a very soft eraser, my mono eraser, and I'm just gonna get rid of that pencil line there. So now I did establish uh, a nice little, uh, very, very, very subtle cheek action there, which is very important. Okay, so there's something going on in the uh, filtrum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep a good distance. And I have my detail mixture. I'm just going to establish a little bit darker on this side. We're going to bring around the shadow. There we go. And like it's really light, right? You're probably like, Tim, I don't see anything. But trust me, it's there. And we're just going to continue working, shaping and just slowly darkening realizing realizing uh all the different shapes that we need to do here see we have a little bit of tailing shadows as it comes down to her cheeks just like there and again some tailing shadow shapes and we're just going to continue modeling the forms now her her face her head is not just one form it's a it's, it's a whole bunch of forms that make up one. And we're just going to continue until we get that. And as you can see, little by little, it's, uh, it's coming together. Hey, Mark, thanks so much for hanging out tonight. Thank you so much for the super sticker and the support. Have a great night. Hope to hear from you during the week. Um, yeah, that's a good fish that uh, uh, Mr. Bradley has there. Uh, so Nameless says he finds that when he's tired he's actually more productive frustration gives him the motivation to finish and get in the zone yeah definitely um, the thing is to uh, you know make sure again as I mentioned last week don't despise the days of small beginnings and that's when it also means in the painting right now. We might look at this painting, it may be one of my best. So we'll look at it and say, wow, that really came together because right now it doesn't look like much of anything, but we are just sticking to it and continuing. And like and like today's, today's whole thing is just to be tenacious and steadfast, right? And that's what we wanna do. We want to uh, make sure that we we stay in the race because if you don't stay in the race, there's no chance to win. And it's not a marath it's not a, a it's not a sprint, but it's a marathon. So you just have to stick stick to it, you know. I'm just gonna start making this arm turn. As the arm turns And we're just going to turn that arm just a little bit. See what looks kind of out of whack later is going to just fall into place. At least that's what we hope, right? You know? So always good to see you, Mark. Okay. 
This is all much darker. We can always lighten that up later. Same thing here. Let's just darken this up here. So it might not look like we did much today, but those who are following along actually realize how much I actually did this, this evening so far. Uh, a lot, a lot went on, a lot of decisions, many decisions, and uh, we just have to uh, stick with the program and just know that, you know, so it's important as we're working to think about, okay, so here's a little something when painting a portrait. You want to always have that person in mind, like what you know of that person. And if you don't know any of that person, what strikes you uh, with that person? Because you want to have, uh, you want to, you want to feel the person that you're painting, right? We're not painting a lamp. We're not painting, you know, a mountain. But we're painting a person. So we want to have that encounter. So I don't know Jody Comer, but I think about her. I think about what she's like and try and channel that as I'm working in the back of my head and that always works to create a portrait that's just a little more personable that has a little more life remember always remember you're painting a person and always think of that person as you're painting them So whenever I do a portrait, I ask the, uh, if I'm doing a commission, I ask for other pictures. And a lot of times I'll ask what that person is like, that sort of thing. And that goes a long way in helping me to create something that has more life to it. Now, I'm not saying uh, I'm going against my whole thing of don't worry about the likeness when you're painting. That's still in effect. But really think about that person as you're working. It's very important, you know. Oh, so Nameless Subscriber says the Fiona piece uh, I did looks nice. How long did it take you? Was that me or Steve? Because I don't, I don't remember doing a Fiona piece. I painted so much. I, I don't remember a Fiona. That might be Steve Leahy's picture. I did one time have a pen pal named Fiona, and she was in Cork City, Ireland. Wow, it really went down. There's only four people watching right now. That's really low, but uh, maybe because the nights are getting colder, huh? So we're down to four people. Oof. It's not the quantity, but the quality, I always say, right? So that's what's important. So who is Fiona? I'm, I'm very intrigued right now. <laughs> okay, so here we have this really beautiful edge here. And remember, I did cut it out with a piece of paper last week. Dun, dun, dun. So let me pull this up. Okay, so so I have this one, so I'm looking for the positive, so that's the negative. Let's see if I can get the positive here. Okay. And fits like a glove. Well, it's not the glove, but it's close to the glove. Let's see. And we have to make sure that this is on the money, everybody. On the money. Okay. And this way I can start painting some of the darks there without having to worry about screwing things up. Oh, look at that. I was off. Not good. See that, guys? Always, always double check your work. Uh, yeah, I almost did a real 
a real boo-boo here. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Oh, someone, oh, you know what it is? That's funny. Uh, I had the, I had the one covered, so there is 14 people in here. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> I was like, four? Oh, my God. Where's everybody going? What did I say? You know, I must have said something wrong. So that's comforting to know. So let's go ahead and uh, start working in this area here. Putting in some of these darks. Beautiful. And then we keep that real, real beautiful edge of the arm. That is funny. Uh, so let's see. Uh, the name of the subscriber says, Tim, it was yours from one of your sketchbooks. Oh, Fiona from Shameless. Yes. Oh, that was a little practice piece. You know, I did a live stream with that, I think, a long time ago. You might be able to see it on an old live stream from like 2017. That was a lot of fun to do. That was in my little sketchbook. Oh, thanks for that, Nameless. Oh, yeah, the character, Emily, Emmy, Emmy, Emmy Blossom. She's fantastic, isn't she? Wow, that's a beautiful woman. So this is going to pay off having this little shield here. And maybe we can come in real quick with the medium mixture. Dun, dun, dun. And maybe we can just do some dark accents here and there. Oh, there's a nice dark accent right here. That will look really good next to that arm. So, that looks pretty good. I'm satisfied so far. So now if I go ahead, whoop, a little bit of dark right here. Okay. Let's take a look. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so you see, now I got some work to do with uh, working on this edge here. I did miss a little bit. Nothing we can't fix. And we're going to do a little bit of a cast shadow of this hair coming out over here. Really start making this look like an arm, not a voided area. But it is turning away from the light a little bit. So I'm going to increase my distance and just make that turn a little bit more than it is. Right? So it looks like, so I'm going to be about five inches away. And as I come further towards the center, I'm going to go further away from the surface with the airbrush. And I'm going to get this beautiful gradation. Same thing here. I'm going to be real close at the edge. And as I get towards the center, I'm just going to slowly, slowly move away. And you can see how this is starting to turn, right? It's turning. It, so right here is the center. Remember, front and center is where... Uh, the light is and it's above so you're gonna see light right here and as it turns this way it gets darker as it turns this way it gets darker however the more round something is uh, it gets darker slowly so that's something to really pay attention the more round the more gradation you have John Diekman have a great night always a pleasure sir that's fantastic Oh, cool. That's great, Nameless. If I find it, I'll see if I can get that out to you as well. So, Nameless has been wanting to do a portrait of her for a while, but afraid it wouldn't do her justice. Ah, oh, no, you should go for it. Don't worry about that. Just have fun. It's all about having fun, my friend. Plus, I know you're going to do a great job. I have faith in you. So, no worries. 
So we're still making, so right now you see that arm looks much more successful than it did, right? So we're just going to work on the edge here. And then we've got some darks, hairs coming down. Just like so. Now it doesn't look like a void. Now it starts to look like hair. Thank God, right? You're like, Tim, what was that? You know? But tenacity, right? We are going to be tenacious. If nothing else, we are going to be tenacious. We are not giving up. That is not in our vocabulary. And, and if we don't succeed the first time, it's just that, it's just, you know, it's just experience that's going to get us to that successful, that successful completion. So look at this uh, beautiful lines I can get with the Extreme Patriot Arrow. Highly recommend this airbrush. The customized Extreme, my customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. And so we did a lot today so far and I think we are doing very well and we have to give ourselves credit. We have a lot of work to do in those gloves but that's going to take really succinctly uh, concentrating on that area. So. Oh, hey, Wendy, how you doing? Thank you so much. Oh, that's so cool to see you. And we're just going to bring this dark over here. So little by little, you can see we, we have the germ of the hair here, right? It's the beginning of the hair. So, you know, we, things are starting to, starting to come together are starting to look like what they may be down the line and that's basically it but at least before right when we started the night what we had was something that looked like a cutout and now she's starting to uh, become assimilated into the background very slowly mind you but she is becoming assimilated into the background and so we have a lot of work to do and so let's see, so we're at 11.28, so I'm just going to come over here. I'm just going to work on some of the shapes of the folds of the glove, which will become much, much darker in time. see the glove really is super light but we're going to build up those dots super slowly thank you wendy i appreciate that oh hey steve yes uh the wheel of names i have to catch up and get all those uh kind of, oh good night todd always great to see you uh i just have to catch up with sending all the stuff out i kind of got overwhelmed with the wheel of names so it's kind of on a short hiatus, but we're bringing it back as soon as I can catch up with the stuff I owe everybody. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I love giving stuff away, but it's really hard to get it out there, <laughs> you know? Hey, Brad, thanks again for the support and the, uh, and the donation. I really appreciate that, my friend. Have a great night. Those of you who are following along, uh, just go ahead and uh, email me if you have any questions about the painting of the stage you're at. I'm always happy to help out. So definitely let me know. And it is 1130, so I did give two hours. So uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Steve, for the donation. And Mark, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. And uh, this was a fun one. Uh, went by quick. When they go by quick, it's always great, you know? They all go by quick, but some, guys, some go quicker than others. And today was a very nice, 
fast live stream and uh, wow it's uh, I need it I don't need a haircut I don't know what I need uh, but anyway take care everybody and uh, Paul always a pleasure my friend and I'll talk to everyone soon God bless